If you are a dwarf from Middle Earth, then you may not be too fond of this video, because today we're painting a cave drake. This is a really cool model and I wanted it for such a long time, but when I received it and it was fine cast, it was a little bit rubbish. The cast is not great and there was a horrendous mold line towards the base of the tail. But I thought, hey ho, it's a dragon, it gets into scuffs and dwarfs are yanking its tail and trying to chop it off, so I left it as it was. But that said, I did use the hairdryer to heat up the tail and the neck section, and I kind of twisted it a bit more into position so it goes kind of along the circumference of the oval base rather than a straighter looking drake. For the majority of this miniature, I'm now going to be using some Army Painter speed paints, but used through an airbrush. I'm pretty crazy for these paints at the moment, and using them through an airbrush is just so, so beneficial. They kind of go on like an ink, or say a filter, and you can still see the colour slightly underneath with the layer that you're actually painting. And if you build these up, which is what we're going to do today with the drake, you'll see that they're quite versatile. Don't forget the little nipper as well! For the undersection fleshy parts of the creature, I actually used a Vallejo Model Air cement grey colour. It's kind of like a skeleton bone colour, but with a touch of green with it as well. At this point I'm not too too bothered if any gets onto the scales, as this will have a few more colours over the top anyway, so you won't really see it. At this point we're really just looking at the neckline to be done, the underneath of the tail and belly, as well as picking out its luscious hair antenna lock things. The next paint is pretty much going to be the key paint for this video, and that is Orc Skin Speed Paint. And this has been thinned down about 50-50 with that Tamiya acrylic thinner. And this is firstly going to be applied onto the areas between the scales and the skin to create a kind of a slight gradient in colour. But I think it's just also a really nice shade of green. At the moment this is my favourite colour combination of using these two greens, but you could also use this on Lizardmen, or the Fantasy Dragons, and you could even try this on Orc Flesh as well, just depending on how steady your airbrushing is. I just used a bit of Hive Dweller Purple for the mouth and also the areas around the feet, but mainly for the underneath sections which will just have a slice of colour. As I was spraying this, I thought that it looked pretty cool alongside the green on the miniature. And I liked it so much that I thought I would try a little bit on the actual skin tones as well. I'm not sure how much of this is going to be seen after I've done the layers, but for now, I know it's there. I still had a little bit of purple left in the cap, so I thought, eh, I'll just use it on the spine as well. Saves wasting paint. After using these speed paints for around about a year now, I always find that using them from a light colour to a darker colour works more effectively. So we've done pretty much the same over here. We started with the light skin colour of a camo cloak, and then we moved on to an orc skin afterwards. And now we're going to go on to Absolution Green speed paint. And this is like a really nice dark rich green colour. This wasn't applied everywhere, but more kind of just in the shaded areas, just to allow the previous colours to still be present. And the intention was to dry brush later on anyway, to pick out those highlights. And for something a bit fun and unique for the tail, I added a series of lines to create a darker marking. But also the main reason is to also try and cover up the not so great fine cast areas. And now for my favourite speed paint, paint is black. This added with a little bit of acrylic thinner is so so good for creating shadows on miniatures, and I'm using this technique on quite a number of projects these days. Like the other colours that we have put through the airbrush today, this black is semi-translucent, so you've got complete control of how much you want to build up the depth of the shadows. Whether it would be a slightly lighter looking shade colour, or you can go pretty much full black. 
And out of everything that I have discovered whilst using speed paints through an airbrush, this is my ultimate favourite thing to do. And that's the shading done on Mama Drake. Now that there are a few shades on the scales, I wanted to add a little bit more onto the actual skin tone itself, and give it a little bit more depth to go along with our purple that we did earlier. So I used a singular drop of Sangolum speed paint and added three drops of the acrylic thinner to really thin this down and make the paint super translucent. It adds a bit of a yellowy hue to the skin tones that we've already got down. And I think along with the greens that we've already added, it kind of goes together quite nicely. And it gives it that snake-like appearance, like Slytherin. And because I'm a bit messy and I got a little bit of green on the antenna dreadlock hair thing on the dragon, I just added a bit of the Vallejo cement grey that we used right at the start to brighten up these areas. Oh, she's just so beautiful. I mean, look at that big smile on her face. The nice thing with this kit is that it comes with a few eggs that you can use within the game. So this was also then zenithal highlighted by using the cement grey. Leaving some of the darker areas of black as shading for underneath the eggs. Don't forget at this point to paint that little egg that Pip Squeak is on as well. After this initial base coat has completely dried, some hardened leather speed paint was then used to colour in the bottom half of the eggs, to then create a little bit of a coloured shadow. A nifty little trick that I discovered recently with the airbrush, if you turn down the PSI to pretty much nothing, I'm running this below 5, and then slightly pull the trigger back, it gives a speckled appearance, as you can see here on the glove. And this was used for the top area of the egg to give it that natural speckled dotted appearance. So there's just a little bit more that we need to do on the dragon, so we'll put these eggs to one side and work on them later. Another one of my favourite things to do recently with the speed paints through an airbrush are spines, talons, pointy bits, spiky bits, bone, you name it. Anything that's like a paley white at the tip to a darky brown bit at the bottom. So this is how I do it now. These areas were first prepped by spraying a skeleton bone airbrush paint. Then we will let the magical speed paints do all the work for us. First up is Pallid Bone, and you can see here on this paper how translucent it's really going to be. And we only really need to concentrate on the bottom three quarters of these spines. So just leave a little bit of the bone colour on the tippy top. Some hardened leather speed paint was then used to go in between its little tootsies, to darken these areas down a smidge. Again whilst applying these paints don't worry too much if you get a little bit onto the skin or the scales, as we're going to be dry brushing and highlighting these areas up in a little while. To create these kind of gradients, I mean in the past I've used normal brushes, I've used makeup brushes, and now using an airbrush it saves me loads of time. Which is awesome because it gives me more time to drink more coffee and uh, be more hyperactive. And of course, and of course, paint more miniatures. At this stage we're using the dark wood speed paint which is a lovely dark brown rich colour. And this was applied to the bottom quarter of all the spines and talons. So it should stand out quite nicely over the paler looking flesh and the green on the spine. So you can finish the spines at this point, but those that know me know that I like to push it a little bit further. So we'll move on to the Grim Black speed paint, and start creating some darker looking shadows. And this is going to be at the very base of the spines, the talons and all that bony jazz. Uh, this will just further enhance the difference between those darker and lighter areas. And for the teeny tiny spines on the, the tail, I decided not to airbrush them because it will be a complete mess. So I'm going to paint them by hand in a moment. Yeah, I'm a drake! Ah, to the cleaner desktop now, and we're going to be doing some dry brushing. This flat dry brush by Army Painter is just the biscuit, and we're going to be using a cool paint name called Mouldy Cloves. I mean, who came up with that? 
For this process, we're just going to let the brush glide over the areas and it'll just pick out the top areas of the sculpt itself, giving it that highlight which is muchly needed. At this point, I'm not really putting on too much pressure, I'm really just letting the sculpt do all the work for me. The nice thing with this kit is that the scales are protruding out quite a lot, so it makes it very very easy to do this method. And I'll prove this to you because you can even create highlights by dry brushing a miniature even when it's completely blurry and out of focus. For the second dry brush we're going to be using a slightly brighter green colour called Snake Scales, which is quite fitting as it's a snake-like creature. However, this time we're only really going to be picking out the kind of tippy top parts of the scales. So you don't need to go over absolutely all of them, just pick out the areas where it's kind of higher up and the light's hitting it from an angle. While still keeping some of the darker tones in the recesses. So we've just got the details of the drake left to do now, and we're going to start with the fleshy mouth area. I like to do this in a fleshy kind of reddish purples, which will contrast quite nicely with the green that we've done. And this was added on to the tongue and around the eyes and the gum line to make it look like she's wearing some sort of dragon lipstick. And then these areas were just highlighted with a bit of pixie pink. I didn't feel the need to add a wash between these two colours as I thought the purple was quite dark anyway and there was already a nice contrast between the purple and the green. So just the pink was needed. For the tongue I really thinned down the paint with water to make it flow even easier over the surface, and this made it a bit translucent at the same time. Whilst the paint was drying I worked on it a bit by dabbing it and adding some horizontal lines to give it a little bit of texture. As the main focal point of the drake is going to be its mouth because it's, well, just massive and wide open, I gave it just one more highlight of centaur skin. This is quite a bright coloured pink so I would suggest adding a little bit of water just to mute it down ever so slightly. You can always build up the intensity of the colour with multiple layers if you want to. Now I learned a long time ago that painting yellow over black is as useful as socks made out of spaghetti, it just won't work. So an initial base coat of white was used for the eyeball. After this white has completely dried, I used my good old paint, Zealot Yellow. Zealot Yellow? Z Zelot Yellow? Z Zelote? Zelote? Zelote Yellow. Huh. As she is a lizard-like creature, I painted a line for the pupil of the eye, rather than a circle which I would do for a human. And then follow this up by painting a dot as a highlight for the actual yellow part of the eye. This is to mimic whatever light may be coming into the cave as a reflection. For the teeth and the spines behind the antenna dreadlocky looking things, I use three paints to finish these off. And they would be a darker base coat of oak brown, a monster brown mid-tone colour, and then finally skeleton bone as a highlight. For the more awkward spines on the tail that we left earlier, just a little bit of strong tone was added to go into the recesses. Speaking of using washes, some dark tone speed paint was turned into a wash by adding some water to it. This is something that I discovered quite early on whilst using this range. Instead of using the speed paint medium that comes with the set, by adding water it helps this liquid flow into the recesses that little bit more. And due to the magical properties and the pigments in the paints, this colour is a bit more punchy than our strong tone counterpart. Thus making it pretty useful for creating subtle shaded areas, and also for picking out those deeper shadows which is perfect for our drake. After the dark wood has been painted on and the recesses have that deeper darker shadow, I wanted to push the brighter highlighted colours that little bit more to create an even larger gap between the darker and the lighter areas on the miniature. So a little bit of pallid bone was used on the spines, the talons, the pointy bits, just to push these out a bit more. 
I decided to go and create a little bit more definition for the skin tones as well. So a slightly brighter creamy green was placed over the top of it using a makeup brush. The soft bristles on these brushes allows you to create layers on top of each other and build them up as you go. And it feels like you have a bit more control doing it this way rather than using a traditional miniature brush. As it creates a subtle gradient from the colour that you're placing on to the colour that's already existing underneath. I'm actually really looking forward to having some games and seeing what this trait can do on the battlefield. Hopefully it will eat through a fair few dwarfs, and that gives me an idea for a base. But before that, I'm going to quickly go over some of the more prominent parts of the skin areas with some necrotic flesh now, and that is a brighter cream with a slight tint of green in it, which is perfect for what we need for this drake. And it should tie in nicely with the green that we've already done for the scales. When using makeup brushes like these, you need very, very little paint in the bristles, as it goes a long way. But probably even more importantly than that, is do not tell your wife that you've pinched them. I wanted there to be a little bit of separation between the spines and the scales and skin. So I just added a quick highlight colour to go over the darker brown. Now I didn't want this colour to be a cream or a brown because we're already using that for the spines and you don't want it to kind of blend in and be a bit mishmashy. So I opted for a more starky, yellowy colour, which will go nicely over the darker brown, but then it won't really look out of place against the skin. And for that final bit of extra added detail for the skin, a whole load of lines were painted onto the flesh. This then creates some extra texture and we're also highlighting some of the areas around the feet. We are only really doing this on the legs and the face area as these are the most prominent focal points as you look at the miniature from the front. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go eat some dwarves. I'm gonna smash them, bash them, cook them in a stew. Gonna have them in a kebab. Mm -mm -mm. Finger licking good. And just because there was a flat area which I thought mm, I could add some extra lines, I added some on the top of the head as well. And that's Mama Drake done, but now we need to finish her eggs. We got to the point earlier where we created a speckled appearance for the eggs. And now using a super thin down watery banshee brown paint, we added some lighter areas to go on top. Hopefully you will notice as we apply this paint it starts to go translucent and some of it disappears. You can keep on prodding the brush onto the top section of the shell until you get the colour that you're after. And then skeleton bone was then used to pick out the highlights for the cracked egg. And why not, you can even add to it by painting on some cracks yourself. If you would like to go even further with these tiny little eggs, then you can either use a fine tip brush, or what I've done here is a really, really old manky brush, prodded it in some tissue to get it out of position and used this new surface area to create a slight mottled effect onto the top of the egg. And don't forget to do the baby drake one! The drake was based up with my Minds of Moria scheme. Check out the link in the description for that one. You can also see that there's a couple rocks and a, a dead dwarf there as well. That was actually cast in putty from, uh, I think it was the Balrog base. And I used something which I found online called Ayumaru to create a cast of it. So if you would like to see that product in action, then let me know in the comments and I'll make a video. Thanks for watching everybody, and keep on hobbying!